Well, that unboxing went a lot better than the X156 unboxing. If you watch that video, I'll post a little link here. You can watch my wife struggle with the monster that is the E1, the X156 by Epax. So this build plate, it's big. It's bigger than anything else I have except for the Phenom or that X156. But after that X156, which was like double this size, this doesn't look so big anymore. But it is big. So I'll flash the specs here, full page so you can see it. And it is a bigger build plate than the Saturn, the Mighty, the uh, E10 without this upgrade. Uh, well, I mean, the build plate's the same. I'm sorry. The build plate's the same as a standard E10, but the screen on this one is bigger and it's a 5K screen. So I'm really excited today to talk about this 5, 5K printer. Um, so I, I can't wait to get testing, which I'm going to do very shortly. So the rest of the stuff in the box was just power, uh, screw to hold it to the arm, scraper, uh, NFEP. All right, so let's look at, so we've got standard, now standard plastic cover on all these, don't care. It looks like a piece of paper uh, between the vat and the screen to protect it right now. This has got, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, look very carefully because this has got, in order to save money, this has a plastic arm and the build plate itself is pretty sure that's a high very high quality plastic not metal it's too feels way too light to be metal of course the build plate itself is metal and it feels it's got some you know almost like pre-sanded it, it's it's built with a kind of a rough texture which is good for the adhesion so what i'm gonna watch with for care for you guys is how does this plastic arm so this this part is plastic and this part is plastic that also looks to be a really nice hard plastic. And I think the E6 had this as well. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to get this off till I fire it up, but I just want to feel the plate. Yeah, that's plastic. Now see, interestingly enough, this has kind of things you could grab to, to, to uh, assist you in carrying the vat, which is actually good. Let me see if I can, I wanna see if I can just applying my physical pressure can make this plastic arm flex at all. I can't. Okay, that's that's a good sign because obviously we don't want we don't want that arm holding the build plate to be able to flex. So I, I'm a little concerned because it's plastic, but I can't. I'm I don't know how strong I'm. I'm decently strong. I'm pretty big, and I can't I can't get it to flex. So. That's a good sign right there. I'm pretty sure I just applied more force than the uh, suction forces when the plate's lifting up. But like I said, I'll watch that very closely for you because I know that's, a, that's gonna be a legitimate concern when you have parts made out of plastic rather than metal. I don't care how high quality the plastic is, we need to pay close attention to it, make sure that the plastic uh, does, is not hurting the overall quality of the machine. So I'll look very carefully at that for you guys. So the build plate, again, metal on the on the surface that's gonna be contacting the model. And then the rest of it seems to have some high quality uh, plastic polymer. So I don't want, I don't need to talk too much about the machine itself. It's, you know, everything on it looks pretty standard. The, the Z axis though is very, you see it's huge, it's thick. That's all metal, it's obviously not moving. The USB is on the side, power switch is on the side, power cord plugs in the back. I still want to try to bend that plastic. Sorry, it, it, it's instinct. I want to just keep testing that plastic. Okay, so far I can't move, which is good. Uh, touch screen in the front, of course. I still, I know I just said this in my E156 video and I'm not sure what the extra cost is, but I, still, I like to see people start making on these bigger printers, bigger touch screens. I don't know, just, just not a big deal, obviously it's, but it just be like a little quality of life upgrade that I'd like to see on one of these. But this thing is sturdy as hell. And despite the plastic arm here, plastic vat, plastic top of the bill plate, the rest of it is very heavy, solid metal. Uh, not nearly as heavy as the, E1, as the X156. Got the standard screw to attach this. It's got the four screw leveling system, which you guys know I like. It's easy to level. Um, normally their stuff comes pre-leveled, so 
but I always I always re-level because since it only takes two, three minutes for me to level the machine, I always feel like even if they pre-level at the factory, I, I just like to re-level myself, make sure it's really perfect. So, and I advise everyone, even pre-level machines like this, just do the leveling yourself again. It's really easy to do. That way you can make sure 100%, hopefully, that it's done right. So I don't want to I don't want to waste any more time babbling. Let me show you. I'm going to insert here the light test that I'm going to do later, so you can watch it right now and let's see how this light source looks. So let me cut away from me, show you the light source test. So you can see there's a tiny little bit of gridding, but the gridding it's actually brighter on the squares, not darker. So I'm totally okay with that. And the other splotchy stuff is actually just the paper itself. So for light source test, I'm happy. Here it is without the paper. You can see nice and clean. This is an actual print running without the batter paper. Looks really good. So I'm happy with it. Okay, now back to me, and I don't know how that light source test was. But I'm going to go right now, do that light source test, talk about it, do a bunch of prints, and come back and give you my thoughts on the printer. So my tests are done. I didn't have to do that many because these days we know what we're getting out of a printer basically. So I wanted to make sure I could print, since it's a 5K screen at 10.1 inches, I wanted to make sure I could print something small. And theoretically at that size, it should be giving us... Uh, below 0 0.50 uh, UM resolution. So a little better than when you get off uh, a, a normal 2K mono screen on the small on the small sizes and a little bit better than you get off the 4K screens like the Saturn, the Mighty, and the E10, the normal E10 itself. So I printed up tiny little dwarf uh, and came out came out great. So we'll look at the high-res photos of that at the end and also I'll flash them here now so you can see. And came out really good, picked up the detail, uh, you know, for a printer that size to be able to print minis like this. I think I loaded the plate and I could fit, I think it was 24 minis on it or something. Maybe it was even more. Now I can't remember. But you could print a lot of minis at once if you want to. Um, from my Kickstarter, I had a, a really cool Dragonborn with a pole arm, Dragonborn Paladin. And I thought, let me see how well that holds up if I print it big. And I gave uh, his optional weapons. I chose to give him the sword this time because I, I don't know, hadn't re really printed many versions of him with the sword. On his back, he has a very detailed book. If you look in, in Dungeons & Dragons 5e, the, the ultimate treasure for a paladin is a book. And on the cover has wings and stuff. So this tiny little sculpt blown up, you can actually see all the detail really, really clear that was sculpted in. Uh, I would say that the 5K screen handled this. You're going to look, again, high-risk photos. This came out incredible. Uh, the detail is amazing. And it printed flawlessly. Again, you're, you're going to be looking at these high-res photos with me. So you'll see, you know, the printer handled the job perfectly. So how do I rate this E10 with the 5K screen? Well, it's basically, you know, resolution-wise, it's only a little bit better than, say, a Saturn, a Mighty, or an E10. Because the increased screen size, you know, would normally affect resolution, but the increase to 5K bumps the resolution back up. So the resolution is just a little better. I don't think, honestly, that you'll notice any difference. But the point is, you now have a bigger screen, 10.1 inches, with the same resolution as these smaller screens. So it can print minis, can easily capable of printing incredible minis, then printing big stuff. And of course, I could have gone a lot bigger, but... This was big enough and heavy enough. I did it solid. It's a nice heavy model. A lot of gravity and suction force was coming out. Oh, I did very carefully observe the arm because it's made of plastic, like I said. And maybe maybe I could see the tiniest bit of flex, but I mean, like, like minuscule. Obviously, didn't affect anything. Um, you know, it, the printer can handle it. That, that plastic arm that I was a little bit worried about or going to observe, which I did, I now have no concerns over it. Um, the, the top half of the bill plate being plastic, also I think meaningless. Uh, the only, the only thing there, and I, this I would only know over time is, you know, because it's plastic, it's then bonded to the metal. So I guess theoretically, whatever is used to bond there, if that somehow ever came loose, that would obviously be a downside, of course, to having that plastic bill plate. But other than that, uh, no downside to it. Oh, the other thing is, uh, the, the bill plate shape, it's kind of like rounded, I don't know if I showed that when I was unboxing it, so I'll see if I can get a picture here. But it's got this nice rounded shape, and the resin 
when a print is done, and EPACs, all their build plates work like this, even the ones that aren't rounded. EPACs does the best job of when you go to take off a print, there's no resin pooled on the build plate. Like this huge build plate had no resin on it. Like all my other big ones, this, the, the Saturn, the Mighty, um, you know, the really big ones, the Piopoli, the, 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 you know, the, the, even the really, really big EPACs one where the build plate you saw was like humongous. Resin tends to pool, not much, but the edges have resin. You have to clean it off or you have to drip or you have to do whatever. But the, the build plate here and on like the Epax X1K, build plate, the way it's shaped, no resin on it. When I went to take these prints off, and you can see in the picture, I think of them on the plate. I'll put a picture here of this guy on the build plate. There's no resin left on the build plate to, to clean off because, because of the shape, the resin all just runs off it. I know it may be a small thing to people, but it's a, it's a really nice touch. Epax seems to always make sure on all their machines. They have the best build plates in, in the business for sure. They always have the biggest slope or the steepest angle. And I have to clean the build plates less than any other manufacturer. So I really love, that's one of the reasons I'm a little bit of a fanboy there is just thoughtfulness like that, you know, it, it means something to me. But this big guy, and I think I blew him up to 500%, um, came out perfect. So again, if you want to do big models, you know, turn them into statues, like you guys know I like to, I'll take this guy, I'll, I'll paint him fake bronze and put him on a fake marble base to look like a nice little statue. Um, and I actually like printing them action figure size like this because I'm an action figure collector also. So it just looks badass. And, and when things are sculpted this good, and we have a lot of good sculptors in our industry now, even though these figures are meant to be 28 millimeters or 32 millimeters, you blow them up, they still look amazing. Like there's, there's incredible detail in this figure, even though it's only meant to be, you know, 32 millimeters tall. I mean, it looks great small, but it still looks great big. I mean, it was really cool. So one, one of the things I don't think we talk about enough in our industry, I'm going off my review for a second, but it's so great that we can scale stuff like this. Just do whatever size you want. I, I just love that. Anyway, so my thoughts getting back to the 5K screen, it gives you slightly better resolution, but it, it allows you to get that big size. So it's great resolution at a great size. I mean, there's nothing, if, if you don't need the extra size, there's not necessarily a compelling reason to get this one. But if you want, a, you know, a 10.1 inch screen is, is significantly bigger than, you know, an 8.9 inch screen. So you get slightly better resolution with that bigger screen. You can print more stuff. You can print bigger stuff. So it depends. You know, this machine is right for you if if you either of those factors matter to you. Um, it works great. I can say that, you know, it printed perfectly for me. So, and, and again, you see the picture. So you get, you get to see the proof yourself. Uh, I know some people have asked about sound. It wasn't, not too loud. I, I wouldn't say it's super quiet, but it's also not loud. I mean... Uh, the sound doesn't bother me either that way that much. It's not like I'm, I'm trying to take a nap in the room with the printer anyway. Uh, so sound to me was okay. Um, build quality was great, even with the plastic arm and, and the plastic um, and the plastic build plate. I still think build quality of the machine itself is excellent. Uh, super steady Z. And again, like I said, the proof is in the pudding. You know, I, I, I printed, I actually printed the small guy twice. In fact, I have the other one here. Um, so I printed him twice. He came out great twice. I was just testing different settings, but printed him out twice. Small figure came out great twice. And then, like I said, went on to the big one. Flawless. Not a line, not anything, just perfect. So, you know, these days I don't know what to say in a review uh, other than it prints great and it's built great, it seems like. So, you know, these days I think all machines are using, you know, kind of basically the same technology. And I think, you know, EPAX prides themselves. They always say they have a different, you know, better parallel light source than, than other companies. So is that true? I don't know. But I all I know is all the EPAX products I have used have been really good. So, you know, I don't, I don't take apart a machine, dissect it, you know, run engineering tests on it. So I, I can't say is their light source better or not than someone else's. All I can say is, the products that I have from them have all printed great. And now this is just like another one also printing great. So for me, Epax is very reliable. Oh, although I should give a heads up, the Epax Hard Gray, my favorite resin, which is used here, they, they did get a bad batch manufactured. I think it was supposed to be after, between like January 1 and maybe end of February. Everything manufactured in there. I think they had a different producer. 
making it for them and they use a different component or something. Anyway, it's supposedly uh, like there's a bad month or two of resin out there. So Epax Hard Gray, my favorite resin. Uh, you know, if you bought it in between there, you might have like some bad batch. And if you're having trouble printing it, don't think your printer's off. It could be that resin. So I know Epax is working hard to correct that from what they told me. Uh, I didn't even know about it because uh, I had bought a ton of this resin like three, four months ago. So I'm stocked up on the old good resin, which I'm using. So I just wanted to throw it out there for people who didn't know. Uh, if you have Epax Hard Gray, I believe between January and February, uh, you, you know, that might be bad. You know, if it's not printing well, if you don't, don't think your machine's off, you might need to uh, replace the resin. So just, just a heads up on that. But anyway, aside from that, Epex quality is, you know, there's, there's a reason it's, it's one of my favorite companies. Um, and I'm a little bit of a fanboy for them. And again, they just deliver with another printer. I don't know what else to say. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, I do think, and honestly, I've, I'm going to have to flash the prices as I'm sitting here. I don't know what the price is. So if, you, if people ask me, well, I, should I get this one? You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend on price, how much you need that extra printing area, that, that much bigger screen that it comes with. Um, and if you want that slightly better re resolution, which I mean, I'm glad they have it, but I don't think it makes that big of a difference, but it just means you're going to get quality prints out of it. Like you're going to get enough, even on a big screen like that, you're getting great resolution. So, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, please subscribe. Uh, please, for any of you people watching my channel, if you didn't back my Pit Fighter Kickstarter, there's still a chance to late pledge it on my mini factory. It's linked in the description and there's going to be late pledges for my Wukong Kickstarter. Uh, should be going live in about a week, uh, so there won't be a link, link for that. But but remember to check back and do that. You'll be supporting the channel, plus some really great art, some awesome figures like this. I mean, these are like incredible minis. Anyway, working on another huge project, which will launch in about three or four months. I really want everyone to support that one. That's, that's, that's uh, like my dream project coming up. So that's it. Thanks, and happy 3D printing.